Good evening, Toastmasters and honored guests. My name is Frank Thomas. <laughs>
Our Area 14, Governor Jane Neen. Area 16, Governor Matthew Fox. Area 17, Governor Lily Simmons. Area 21, Governor Latrice Ford. Did I miss any <coughs> distinguished yes, dignitary? Yes, yes. Dee Marie. Dee Marie. <laughs> hey, I would like to recognize any DTMs that I have to call. Can you stand? Because I think DTMs are just like MVP. So I would like to recognize you as well. And I'm one of them. That's why I said that. <laughs> now give them a wonderful hand. I go any further, I would like to introduce Tim Bolger. He's going to come up and give you some details of what he's doing here tonight. Tim, can you come up, please? All right, Tim. This contest is being taped along with all the other eight division contests. These will be released publicly come Sunday or Monday along with all the other eight division contests. Normally, I send a link to the, you know, to the division governor, making it public. But because I've got two more coming Saturday, they'll all be released at once. If you want to opt out of taping, please see me so I can get a picture, so I can get it to make sure I don't forget you during the editing process. And if you are a contestant and you haven't signed a video release form yet, please see me. Videos will be made available at www.timsvideo.com, and I will also make links available on a LinkedIn group. Thank you. Thank you for doing that disclaimer. That is important. Right. Now, also, baseball has a legend. His name was Ernie Banks. Yes. And Mr. Cub was famous for one thing. If it was nice outside, he always said, let's, let's play, play too, right? Tonight, we have two contests. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> now, before I begin with the contest, I would like to remind everyone in this room, if you have one of these devices, it honks, it oinks, it moves, it makes a lot of noise. Let me turn mine off as I speak to you guys. Please turn it off or turn it to vibrate. We do not wish to disturb the speakers. The first contest is the table topic contest, which will be followed by the international speech contest. When the table topic contest is concluded, we will have a 10 minute break. Afterwards, we will conduct the international speech contest. The contestants, the timers, battle counters, and sergeant at arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmasters international rules governing this contest. Please, no one, should leave or enter this room during the contestant's presentation. However, if you're good, you may do so if time permits during the one minute of silence between presentations. Thank you. And with that said, let the contest begin. I will give the speaking order for the table contest at this time. Contestant number one, John Martin. John Martin, contestant number one. Contestant number two, Michael Carson. Michael Carson, contestant number two. Contestant number three, Steve Few. F-R-E-W, Steve Few. Contestant number three. Contestant number four, Jonathan Getz. Jonathan Getz, contestant number four. Contestant number five, Amit Miglani. Amit 
Miglani, contestant number five. Last but not least, contestant number six, Amy Lee Sagami. Amy Lee Sagami, contestant number six. Now, I would ask our sergeant at arms to escort five of the contestants and leaving the first contestant in the room. Would you please do so and let me know when you are ready. they would tell me in private, perhaps if we were traveling together. What secrets would they share that they had not told anybody else before? And what would those inner thoughts reveal about that person that made them so special, that made them so unique, and that made our relationship so close? If you can reveal how somebody has touched you in your life, that person is a very dear person, and they're a very special and a very important person. It takes a very special person to be able to have an impact so great as to make you want to eulogize them, as to make you have the honor to tell the greatness of their life. Thank you. Madam Timer, please put one minute on the clock. Judges, please mark the balance. Contestant number two, Michael Carson. Michael Carson, contestant number two. This is a pretty big room. 
room, so forgive us for this focus. Michael, if you had to give a eulogy for your best friend, what would you say? Let me repeat that. If you had to give a eulogy for your best friend, what would you say? Michael Carson. Dignitaries, distinguished Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, if I had to give a eulogy for my best friend, what would it be? First of all, it would be pretty sad. If you've all had a best friend, they're there with you. They're there with you through good times. They're there with you through bad times. You may hate them at one point in your life. And guess what? They show up the next day, but they're not there anymore, and it's sad. So what can you do in a eulogy? You can tell the truth, and you can paint your picture in the best friend, you can paint your friend in the best picture possible. And I would do that through honesty and humor, absolute humor. The funniest moment you've ever had with your friend, you bring it to the eulogy. Because at a sad time like that, people need to laugh. And they need to take something with them. So you bring honesty, you bring humor, and you bring yourself, representative of a relationship with a best friend that has endured their entire life. That is what I would do at my best friend's eulogy. Master Toastmaster. Timers, please put one minute on the clock. Judges, please mark your balance. Contestant number three, Steve Few. Steve Few, contestant number three. adjustment problems in junior high school and in high school. We moved, I changed schools, I didn't fit in, I wound up being a greaser. In the greaser crowd I found Tom. <laughs> Tom was a prince among greasers. And he made me a sub-prince to Tom. Tom was big and tall, I was shorter at the time. Tom was strong and I was weak. Tom knew how to fix cars and I couldn't fix anything. <laughs> Tom was my hero. Tragically, our ways parted. I went off to college. Tom went to auto mechanic school, which had been my ambition. I came back from college and I saw Tom one last time. 
Park Forest Mall. We said hello to each other, shook hands, we'd gone apart. And a few weeks later, I got the word that Tom had committed suicide. Had a relationship breakup, and he was gone. It just left the hole in my heart. I still remember him today. My wife Jackie and I moved a few years ago and I found a picture of the 1930 DeSoto that Tom and I had stripped onto the ground and rebuilt back up again. Tom, wherever you are, I love you like a brother. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> Timers, please put one minute on the clock. And judges, mark your ballots. Contestant number four, Jonathan Getz. Jonathan Getz, contestant number four. Jonathan, if you had to give a eulogy for your best friend, what would you say? Let me repeat that. If you had to give a eulogy for your best friend, what would you say? Jonathan Getz. Thank you, honoraries and distinguished Toastmasters. If I had to give a eulogy for my best friend, immediately my mind would go to the fact that he was the best man at my wedding. At weddings, it's typical that the best man and the maid of honor give a little toast. They might not be a toastmaster, but hopefully they have at least some ability to speak in front of your friends and family. Unfortunately, my best man embarrassed me deeply. This puts him in great risk and in danger if he has me speaking at his funeral. <laughs> I met my best friend my freshman year of college. He was my roommate. We didn't become best friends quickly because he covered the floor in his clothes. I kind of got over this and we successfully became friends and even best friends and I had him be the best man at my wedding. But at my wedding, he decided to stand up and tell a litany of the most embarrassing stories in my past. People might expect this to some degree when they hear a best man's speech. is the best man, after all, and not the maid of honor. Maid of honor, we expect compliments, etc. But best man may be something a little worse. So, he goes on and he tells in front of my new wife and in front of my family and my new family all the most embarrassing parts of college. If I read his eulogy, I would start by saying the most embarrassing things <laughs> from college in his life. <laughs> Since I was the more picking up, orderly, making sure he woke up for his 8 a.m. class friend, I think it's safe to say I have more embarrassing stories about him than he did about me. <laughs> We could start, for example, about the time when he was obsessed with a girl and just kept asking me whether he should ask her out and what he should do in general. And he went against my best advice and went up to her and said, I really want to be your boyfriend. Not the best way to ask a girl out. So we could start with that. Remember, this is his funeral. I'm totally comfortable with saying these things. <laughs> Another thing I might go to is the fact that he Probably sophomore year, realized he had never washed his sheets. 
<laughs> this is the point at the funeral where I would inform everyone that I told the undertaker not to wash any of his clothes. <laughs> I understand that some of these things are a little too embarrassing and he might be a little upset, but you know, when we're both in heaven, I think when we're eating cream cheese or playing harps that he'll be able to forgive me and we'll be able to remain best friends. <laughs> Madam Timer, please put one minute on the clock and judges mark your balance. Contestant number five, Amit Niglani. Amit Niglani, contestant number five. <laughs> Amit, if you had to give a eulogy for your best friend, what would you say? Let me repeat that. Amit. If you had to give a eulogy for your best friend, what would you say? Amit Miglani. Hello, Toastmasters. Thanks for coming over here, joining us, and listening to our stories. Thank you so much. And thanks to BP for organizing all of this. If I was to give a eulogy and about a friend, a good friend, I'll actually both start by saying, I lost a big part of my life. <coughs> Friends are people who stand with you no matter when you are, where you are, how you are. And for a person like me, I have made friends in US, not in India, but in US, who are like my brothers. When I first came over here, I was greeted by a hello. I met a person I didn't even knew at that point of time, and he showed me how to go to my university. That person is my best friend now. That person is the same person who basically was with me when I was moving my houses, and he just said, let me come and help you. I didn't ask him to, but he was there knowing that I won't be able to carry my stuff. He was the same guy who was there to comfort us when my mother-in-law was dying, and he had to come and help us go to India at the last minute. He took care of my daughter for one whole day. Guys, losing a friend is never easy. But when it happens, it happens. All you can think about is, wherever he is going or she is going, they're making someone else happy, helping someone else over there. And for that guy that I have in my mind, I hope I should never be able to live that, that I have to say these words for him. But if I have to, I just hope God has the best guy with him. Thanks, guys. Madam Timer, please put one minute on the clock. Judges, mark your ballots, please.
affected by the ballot counter. I went to my first conference and it was the best thing I ever went to in Toastmasters because I saw a speaker coming there actually riding on a motorcycle. Yeah, and, and one guy actually stood on a chair and was giving a speech, so I thought this is how Toastmasters would always be. <laughs> but let me just say this, it's a great two days of fun and entertainment. We have educational programs. We also have two of the best speech contests in the Midwest. The winners of the contest tonight will be representing Central South. And the table topics contest and the international speech contest 
on Friday and Saturday, respectively. We're also celebrating our, is it 65 years yeah. for 65 District 3? Yep. So we're going to take it back 65 years ago to the 50s. So if you want to dress up in your favorite 50s attire, you saw how I did this baseball thing, so. He said that he was going to dress up like Fonzie. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Oscar, if you dress up like Fonzie, I'll wear a poodle skirt. <laughs> you won't see me in a poodle skirt. <laughs> I don't believe he's going to do it. But if he doesn't, I'll wear my poodle skirt. And, and let me say this. Rachel is holding up the, our two keynote speakers for, for that weekend. Cheryl Roush, world-renowned author. Alan Shaner, he's one of our international directors. He's going to be telling us some announcements from Toastmasters. I think we're also having a, a Toastmasters have talent, like a talent show for Toastmasters. So Friday I think we're still night. look. I still I think we're looking for talent still. We are still looking for some talent. We have some dancers, some singers, some yodelers. I'm joking, but I do have somebody playing the dulcimer, the balloon act, uh, basketball. No, I'm joking. <laughs> People are doing all types of things. So if you have a talent, you should sign up. And if you don't have a talent and you want to really enjoy yourself, you should show up. <laughs> yeah. And if anyone has earned an educational award in the last, I think it's the last six months or just the fiscal year, we'll also be recognizing them at the Achievers Breakfast. So come on out, have some fun, and That's now let's go ahead and get started with the raffle real well, quick. Wait one second. Oh, I do want to say one thing. <laughs> the great thing about this event is that if your club pays, unfortunately we already passed the date for the 125 right now I believe it's like 135 for the club if your club pays every single member of your club and all of their guests gets to attend for that one fee otherwise you pay $45 per person I'm just letting you know so it's great to have your entire club pay and have all of your members come there's not too many opportunities that you have to have an event like this where you have your learning sessions fun sessions and you get to see the winners from tonight's contest go on to an even better contest. Of course it's better. We're constantly having people wrap up, ramp up from speech to speech. Highly recommend that everybody attend. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Oscar for the wow. raffle. That's right. Let's do this. Rick. Oh. Did everybody pick me, pick me, pick me. Did everybody get a ticket? Yeah, okay, good. Can I have Melissa listen to the governor of Marketing coming up here for a one? Pick me, pick me, pick me. Also, our Minnesota Chair, Mr. Don Wiz, over to pull one, two. Come on, Don. Next winner, 206-215.
I said, don't let that bitch be in it with me. Who is the edge for? This is the world's championship edge with Patricia Phipp. Yeah. Phipp, you know how it is. Ready, Valentine, Ed Tate, and Darren LaCroix. The winning number is 